What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the all new 2020 Mazda CX-30. Huge thanks to Mazda for flying me out here to Palm Springs to review the brand new CX-30 for you guys today. So about the CX-30, so this is a new entry. It's not replacing anything. There still is the CX-3 and the CX-5. This is supposed to be in between those two and it looks very good in typical modern Mazda fashion. It is just gorgeous looking. It's a nice blend of both the Mazda 3 and the CX-5 to me, uh, but looks really, really sharp and does have a lot of unique stuff for the CX-30 here. So you can see the headlamps up front there, still just very sharp. I love the design of those and uh, the inset grille you have there with a cool you know pattern on it. But one cool thing that is different uh, for the front end here is you'll see this new little slim fog light and turn signal arrangement there in the bottom of the bumper. And that's a new thing here for Mazda design language. And I really like the way that looks. You also do have in typical crossover fashion, your aggressive body cladding here on the sides. But uh, you know, I think it works well with this. Obviously, if you don't like that kind of stuff, you can get a Mazda 3 or something like that, which is going to be very similar in size. Although this is a little bit bigger. Uh, and of course you have more ground clearance and stuff. And then going out back, I really love the back end of the CX-30 here. You can see how kind of the hatch comes to a point there around the Mazda emblem in a way and uh, kind of juts out a little bit more so that it's not just flat uh, like many other boxy crossovers. Uh, but you also have a wider kind of hips and uh, back end of the vehicle there that really stands out nicely going down the road. If you're following one of these, uh, that back end is just really uh, more sculpted than what you see on, again, many of the more slab-sided crossovers that this competes against. And so I think as far as this segment goes, this is one of the best looking ones by far. Right, so the interior here in the CX-30, well, it is so nice. This is the new gen Mazda interior. And Cliff Notes, it's basically best in class as far as interiors go in this segment. Hands down, nothing else even comes close to being this nice in this segment. So anyway, first thing, zing down in these seats. You have these very nice parchment cream leather seats here in this one. This is the premium, the top trim. And, um, but you know, it's very nice. It is real leather. You can't get leatherette in the lower trims or cloth, uh, but these seats are so comfortable. Bolstering's actually really Really good too and uh, they just it gives you a really good seating position here in the CX-30 uh, but just you know great support it also has lumbar adjustment as well as memory function here in the higher trims as well and uh, they're also heated seats they aren't ventilated that is one thing that is missing but we do have button cutouts here um, so I'm hoping maybe that's something they'll add down the road I don't know um, but anyway interesting nonetheless but great seats steering wheel is also fantastic here in the CX-30 same wheel as the new Mazda 3 and I love Love it. I love the design of it. I love the feel of it. I mean, it has a great nine and three grip, nice little 10 and two notches, uh, you know, just some paddle shifters here on the back, but I love the metal buttons you have on the front of it here. You know, there are a decent amount of buttons, but um, they're all logically placed and I like the little rockers you have here. Gauges are also fantastic. So you have the middle portion that is digital, but all the gauges, you know, if they're analog style are very easy to read, very clear and concise. Um, now, unfortunately there isn't much customization there. Basically all you can do is the redundant range gauge, which is basically mirroring the fuel gauge. Um, you can just have that be a, just a number instead of having it be a, you know, gauge style setup there. Um, but that's really the only thing you can change there. And Mazda, you know, they are very focused on limiting distractions. And so that's why they say they deliberately chose not to put media information, all that type of stuff in the gauge cluster. They're like, you'll never see what song is playing in our gauge clusters. It's just something they're not interested in doing. I can understand that and appreciate it. I think it's kind of nice to have sometimes and have some type of customization in the gauges, um, but they want us to just be focused on just the driving dynamics and the, the driving aspects of uh, you know the experience. So that's why the gauges are just showing you your car information. That's it. You do also have a heads up display here in this top trim, and that will give you like your next turn for your navigation if you're running that as well as of course uh, your speed and it can also give you a, a couple other alerts there um, so that's nice to have if you want a little bit more information and be even less distracted having the heads-up display is nice and it's great that it's actually projected onto the windshield some of the other uh, competitors that have uh, or even the CX-3 has a little pop-up plexiglass thing um, so to have it actually projected on the windshield is great coming over to the center of the dashboard here right up top you have this 8.8 .8 inch infotainment display now it is not touchscreen uh, but it is identical to the one in the Mazda 3 and it's really high resolution and very uh, interesting. So, you know, Mazda does a lot of research on um, human psychology and, and how, you know, we best uh, work with uh, the, both the machine and the interfaces and all that kind of stuff. And so they simplify the amount of offerings you have. So instead of having a bunch of different things on the screen, um, you just have, uh, you know, between like five and seven menu choices for everywhere you see. So even in the main screen here, you got five different things and it's divided out and you can go into the sub menus there and go through everything. And it is one of the easiest 
easier systems to use and uh, you know I still personally prefer touchscreen but I get that they want to limit distraction that's also why this screen is mounted so high because there's less of a refocus time for your eyes uh, going from this screen to the road uh, versus looking down at something that's um, you know lower like a lot of the competitors have so I can appreciate that it is a great screen it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in all except the base trim not sure why this screen is standard in all the trims even the base one gets this big you know, widescreen display, but unfortunately, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is reserved for you know non-base trims, um, which is okay. Um, you know, because most people aren't going to buy the base model anyway, so not a big deal there. Um, but there's so many good things with this infotainment. So you know, like I said, everything's pretty easy to navigate through. I will say, I still am missing a tune knob. You do have a volume knob down here, and obviously your controller wheel for the screen. But um, having a tune knob is something that's nice whenever you are just hopping in a vehicle and just scrolling through radio stations. But Mazda did emphasize that you know whenever you buy one of these you're going to set up your favorites there's a little star button here next to the volume knob and that will you'll program in all your favorites as far as whether it's contacts addresses or radio stations and media sources all that type of stuff and so once you have all your favorites saved and you own one of these all you gotta do is hit that favorites button and it's going to pull up all those and you'll be able to scroll through all your favorites immediately so that kind of softens the blow of not having a tune knob so i can forgive it you know that's much you know, nice that you have that functionality with the favorites and i think it's kind of a cool setup but you do also have these shortcut buttons here down by the controller wheel if you want to hop straight into one menu you know for navigation or music whatever and so that's nice and it's also you press that button while you're in there and it'll first bring up now playing if you press it again it'll bring up the source list so that is pretty quick and easy to you know select all that kind of stuff so that is good and this system the more that I've gotten used to it the more that I do appreciate it and enjoy it but I still personally uh, like touchscreens a little bit better. Um, but yeah, and then coming down, you just have your climate controls here, which have just a wonderful weight to them and just feel really nice. Just a few buttons. I said, you know, how there's no uh, ventilated seats. You also can't get a heated steering wheel in any trim, regardless of how high up you go, which is kind of a bummer, especially for a premium vehicle like this. You know, that's something you see in premium brands pretty consistently. So to not have a heated steering wheel is a little bit of a bummer. Moving on to storage space here, though, you have uh, a good amount of space here for a vehicle of this size. So first off, off, uh, right beneath the climate controls you'll see a USB jack as well as a nice little rubberized cubby that can fit for example like my iPhone 11 fits in there very nicely you also have two large cup holders you have uh, the center armrest which is another interesting Mazda thing where it doesn't just open up they say that takes more arm motions um, for a shorter driver so instead it slides and then goes up and they say that's easier um, it's a little confusing but once you get used to it it's all good and uh, it's a good amount of space in there uh, you know you have this little divider you can move around if you want and it's pretty deep for again the type of vehicle we're in it's not massive but pretty good you also have a power outlet and another usb jack in there and uh, this armrest is really nice and softly padded it really feels very plush and premium i could rest my elbow on there all day other things that are very nice you have more padding down by your knee area here now it is hard plastic by the engine start button and stuff but you'll never come in contact with that with your knees i don't think unless you're sitting way too close to the wheel so um where it's padded is where your knee will usually rest and so that's that's great to have that because there's a lot of even higher end vehicles in the luxury segment that don't have padding here so I love that um, also just all the nice trim around the doors and stuff you'll also find a large pocket in the door with a bottle holder so that's great um, and just all the trim in here is so nice I mean even the top of the dashboard here is nicely padded around the climate control area and then you have this brown this dark brown leather accent here on the top of the dashboard as well and so that's what you get on the higher trims and the lower trims this is actually navy blue you can't get a black top of the dashboard which is great but the navy blue is close to black so i don't think it's going to upset anyone to not have a fully black interior um but the navy blue is a really cool option i wish uh we had one of those here but we don't unfortunately to show um but uh so that's on the lower trims you get navy blue on the lower trims and on the higher trims here you get the dark brown both are great and i love the inclusion of more color and more interesting designs on an interior i think it's really welcome another thing that's a uh, fantastic to listen to before i move on to other parts of the car is this bose stereo so this is this bose center point stereo system it's 12 speaker it's an option here in the higher trims but in the lower trims uh, you have an eight speaker system um, and those still sound very good for one big reason so um, Moz is one of the first I think the first to do this and I don't know why more comp car companies don't but they actually don't have any large speakers here in the bottom of the doors like you see in other vehicles instead that speaker that's usually there which is a, normally a base uh, driver those are instead in the cowl here in front of the door 
And so that opens up so many possibilities, and I ranted and raved about this in the Mazda 3, which also has this same characteristic, where you could have such a cleaner base because you don't have a rattle in the door anymore. And it also insulates the vehicle better because you have, um, you know, actually, you know, less of a cut out there, so you don't have any compromises as far as insulation and NVH goes. And it even is, it goes so far, Mazda even said that, you know, whenever you're on a Bluetooth phone call, for example, usually when you're walking around outside of other people's cars, you can hear their phone conversations on Bluetooth sometimes. With this, it it's actually insulated enough you don't hear that stuff because that speaker isn't in the door there um, you know broadcasting it to everyone outside so you have it more well insulated in here so people aren't going to hear the music you're listening to or the phone call you're on and that's a very cool thing and um but this Bose system is, honestly, there's cars double the price, triple the price that don't have a stereo that sounds this good. It is, I mean, the bass is incredibly crisp. You can, I mean, we are we had a bass all the way up on a Daft Punk album, um, and also it was running at, uh, FLAC files. So that's another unique Mazda thing is through the USB jack there, you can run FLAC files. Uh, so it's very high resolution audio. And doing that with this super clean bass and, uh, you know, the Bose uh, stereo experience here, it is just... It was mind blowing. And so, yeah, if you care about music uh, and it's important to you, I think the Mazda should be at the top of your list. Um, so yeah, uh, overall so nice here just for the front passengers, but then back seat here in the CX-30 is pretty good. Now it's gonna be less space than the CX-5, of course, um, but it is a little bit more roomy than the CX-3. So uh, obviously it's the middle in between those two, so that makes sense. But um, me being five foot nine, uh, sitting behind myself, I have about uh, two, maybe three inches of legroom to spare thanks to that cut out there. Um, so it's not a ton of space. Um, so if you're a taller driver, or if you see like the passenger seat here is a Little further back it can get tight so I wouldn't call it a spacious back seat but for the class of vehicle we're in I think it's average for the class and uh, should be fine headroom is actually plentiful even though this is a little bit of a coupier type of look um, you still have you know plenty of headroom there several inches to spare uh, you also have bottle holders in the doors a nice little pocket there and you also have here on the uh, some of the higher trims it's actually select and up I think you get rear air vents so um, Aside from the base trim, all the other trims get rear air vents, which is a rare thing for a vehicle in this class. So that's great. You also have a full down center armrest with two cup holders built into it. And so overall, a really nice, comfortable back seat. And then uh, cargo space is also pretty good here in the CX-30. Again, it is definitely better than the CX-3. You have a lower load floor and uh, more space just in length and width. Um, but again, it is definitely smaller than a CX-5. So uh, it's still plenty of space. Obviously, you can see a suitcase back there, no problem. Gives you kind of a good idea of how much space we have to deal with there um, and so no complaints as far as that goes again for the segment of vehicle we're in and I think it's actually slightly better than stuff like the Hyundai Kona which seems a little more cramped in the back there this seems to have a little bit more space and so overall you know should work for most people just fine all right so start and go for a drive the uh, CX-30 here is the new Mazda key just like the new Mazda 3 does these buttons here on the side of it and just a really nice key um, has a you know nice weight to it uh, feels pretty good uh, but I actually like the old Mazda key as well this one's a little little bigger which I'm not in love with but I do like the new design I think it's pretty uh, attractive but of course it's keyless access keyless entry and push button start so you just leave the key in your pocket hit the engine start button and it starts right up all right so setting off here in the 2020 Mazda CX-30 so we're starting off right on some windy roads here um, and so this really helps to just show just how nice the handling is right off the bat so it is very similar to the Mazda 3 as far as the mechanicals for the suspension and stuff so you do have like a torsion beam rear suspension but you know they argue that that actually doesn't hurt the handling even though you know the previous gen Mazda 3 did have an independent rear um, and I actually had no complaints with the Mazda 3 handling I thought it was really good for this new generation and uh, you know you do have more uh, ground clearance here with the CX-30 so that might be compromised a little bit I mean these are some really taxing corners these are awesome corners we're on here um, so it really exaggerates that feeling of you know you are sitting up higher um, so it's gonna feel a little less direct but it really is it's such a smooth ride I mean I mean, these roads are you know very well maintained and you know not too bumpy or anything but it really glides through these corners very nicely and uh, feels feels good I mean everything about the Mazda they're so they do so much study of the human body and how we react to things and how we give inputs and and uh, you know receive feedback and stuff and so they, there's so much obsession to detail as far as how every little thing is tuned and you really feel that it just makes for a very polished experience in a lot of ways uh, so you know steering has a really natural weight to it it has a little bit more of a weightiness to it than you might be used to with other subcompact CUVs uh, but it, it feels 
high quality and it feels like it's it just again a little more effort is required but that it's makes for more rewarding and a more connected experience uh sand goes like you know throttle response is pretty nice and sharp it's connected to this uh naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine so you don't have any turbos to wait for you have a normal six-speed automatics so there's any weird cvt slushiness like you see with a lot of the other compact cvs and so all these things just give it a very direct and very predictable feeling everything reacts the way you would expect it to and want it to and that's one thing that i've always appreciated about these and we we are going uphill here, but just to try out the brakes a little bit, another thing you'll notice is it's a nice firm brake pedal right at the top of the pad. So um, you can be a little more, I guess, liberal with your leg inputs. And so like th some other vehicles they were saying in the presentation, how uh, you know German manufacturers, for example, have a little bit more of a sensitive brake pedal. This is a less sensitive brake pedal, but it means you don't have to use as much of your shin muscles, which are less developed than your calf muscle, which is the stronger one. So you can be a little more, um, I guess less graceful with your brake inputs, but it doesn't make it for a less smooth uh, stopping experience. And it still is very gradual and uh, feels feels really, really nice. Uh, other things here. So we are going around these corners, pushing it a little bit. And uh, one thing you'll notice is that it is still very flat. You do have a little more weight, obviously, than you would have with a Mazda 3. Um, the exact weight figures, it uh, starts around, I think, 32, 32 for the curb weight for a front-wheel drive one. This fully loaded premium all-wheel drive one we're in is uh, about 3,408 pounds, I believe, is the curb weight, which is still, I mean, very low for a for a crossover, and especially one that has as nice of an interior as this does with so many luxury features. Um, to have a curb weight that's still, you know, well under 3,500 pounds is impressive, but that is rough about 150 pounds heavier than a Mazda 3 hatch so um, you know obviously that depends on the comparable trims and whatnot not a bad weight gain for you know all the extra you know off-road clearance and a little bit of a larger dimension you have here with the CX-30 over the Mazda 3 handling wise the Mazda 3 is still definitely the better handler but this still handles well enough for again we're talking about a compact crossover not something that is you know going to be a sports car people don't buy these to tear up back roads like this uh, you know so uh, for normal commuting and stuff it's going to be really really nice but still give you confident handling that you expect from Mazda this is going to feel uh, you know very sporty even though you are in a compact crossover and that's more than you can say for a lot of the competitors a lot of the competitors um, have really chintzy economy car routes and you know it's it's not a polished experience a lot of things feel a lot cheaper this you know is a, a higher quality product not only with the interior just being so much nicer than all the comp competitors really but you know you find that polish also in the driving experience and so it's a very well-rounded vehicle it's also impressive as far as uh, all the road noise and NVH in the vehicle it's it's so refined and I mean you really don't even hear any wind noise at all it's way quieter than all the competitors in this segment that's for sure um, and you know just the smoothness of the ride the, the quietness everything is very easy as far as visibility too you have nice thin a pillars uh, that are actually kind of close to you so they seem to not obscure your vision as much as they would in other vehicles the mirrors are off onto the doors so you don't have any kind of blockage there view out of the back is also really great in typical SUV fashion but they did slant the rear window a little bit more than what you would go with something like a CX-5 for example uh, but despite that extra you know angle you don't have any compromise in visibility out of the back so that's great um, and of course you still have the all the safety tech um, that you expect in a modern vehicle these days and so um, things like blind spot monitoring are optional still but you have standard automatic emergency braking uh, standard lane keeping assist uh, all those types of things even standard adaptive cruise control and so those are all great features but I also love the way that they're set up in the Mazda and it was actually interesting in the Mazda presentation they said that they trust the driver more than they trust the sensors in the car and so they're not going to override what you are trying to do and so for example if you're you know going over the lane mark is a little bit to avoid a bicyclist or something in other vehicles it would jerk at the steering wheel and try and get you back within the lane and be really um, authoritative about being like you have to be in the middle of the lane this will actually give you a little more grace so it's less annoying and I mean I'm not crossing near the lines or anything here so I'm not gonna test it just yet but I will say that you know even with some other vehicles when you are within the lines they'll still scold me for not being sent 
centered in my lane enough. And this doesn't have any kind of overreaching characteristic, at least so far. Uh, but I appreciated that as well in the Mazda 3, where they're, they never really intervened. And they, they actually have less interventions than most of the other systems because they just set that up to be more relaxed. Now, if you like the vehicle to correct you a lot and stuff, you can go in and custom tailor those safety systems to be more aggressive or less aggressive or turn them off completely if you'd like. So it's totally up to you and what you want to do. And there's even a quick little button here you can press just to temporarily turn everything off if, you know, you're in a situation where it's annoying you a lot or whatever. Um, so, you know, not a not a big deal there. You know, it's just really nice that you can have that exactly how you want it. And so I respect them for respecting the driver because that's something that seems to be a trend that's getting more and more rare these days where everyone's taking control away from the driver and allowing everyone to rely on all these nannies to keep them in line. And I like that Moz is like, you're the driver, you control it. And um, as, as someone who's an enthusiast, I really appreciate that. And we're behind traffic now, but I'm also impressed with the power of the CX-30. So I'll do an acceleration here and a minute but um, you know just driving up these hills and stuff you have 186 horsepower 186 pound-feet of torque and uh, that's more than everything in the subcompact class and so that's that's actually a, a very nice thing because it's not even relying on turbos or anything like some of the competitors like the Kona can get close with its turbo motor and it's like 175 horsepower but with this you know nationally aspirated engine lots of torque lots of power immediately you know the largest engine in the class as well and so uh, it, it gives you plenty of power even when we're going up into the mountains here it's not prime uh, conditions for a nationally aspirated engine like this but it still um, seems to have plenty of power you know since you have a six-speed automatic it's not hunting around for gears as much as you'll see in some of the competitors they either have CVTs or higher um, you know transmissions with seven eight nine gears or whatever I kind of like the simplicity of this you know it still gets good competitive fuel economy on the highway and stuff even though it only has six gears I still just appreciate the fact that it uses a normal automatic because CVT is still annoy me in most applications that they're used in and I like that this is just much more direct all right so let's turn on to the straight road here and see how it does So, picking up nicely. And uh, yeah, so it's it's not fast feeling, but it gets up and goes very well. Again, for the class of vehicle we're in, like I said earlier, good amount of power and uh, about as good as you're going to get as far as acceleration goes in this class. So uh, it's good now. There wasn't an official zero to 60 time given by Mazda, uh, but the Mazda 3 is about a seven second zero to 60 vehicle and this weighing, you know, 150, 200 pounds more, I'm guessing it's going to be, you know, in the low seven second range. And so, you know, for a crossover of this type, that's pretty good because there's some that are 10 second cars or, you know, eight, nine second vehicles. So this is probably going to be, you know, one of the fastest ones out there. And, uh, you know, for commuting around and stuff, it's going to be totally fine. It would be cool if they offered a sportier version of this with the turbo motor uh, that you see in the CX-5 and stuff. But uh, for right now, it's just the 2.5 liter. But I'm glad they put that in there because, you know, like the CX-3, you only get a 2 liter four-cylinder uh, and that has a lot less power. So I like, you know, having the, the fact that you have the 2.5 liter is nice in here. And, uh, you know, the transmission will downshift and, you know, give you uh, a little bit more power too if you want it. And even we can go over into the manual mode here and... Uh, try that out and it's about the same as other Mazda automatics where you know you're not gonna want to paddle shift on a regular basis but if you feel like doing a manual shift every once in a while you know it's fine it's nice that they have it um, but I personally would just you know use your foot and just hit the gas you're gonna get a way quicker response that way than you will playing around with the shifting yourself there is also a sport mode as well um, and that does actually change the transmission settings and that's about all that it really does it doesn't change steering weight or anything like that so uh, it's mostly just it's much more eager to downshift there in that sport mode so if you are in a hurry and you're wanting to get on it uh, that's probably the way to go uh, but then it does like to hang out you know 4,000 rpms kind of unnecessarily for for a little bit longer than you would expect so sport mode's great if you're actually you know really driving aggressively otherwise you're better off just you know leaving it in the normal mode and letting it do its thing but it is interesting to note so one other thing to mention here about the uh, cx30 is that its all-wheel drive system is the most advanced that i think moss has ever really done so it'll have a bunch of tricks up its sleeve it'll drag the uh outside front brake in order to you know minimize understeer and all those types of things and uh, just give you a balanced feeling
traveling going through corners, but the all-wheel drive system also is a lot more efficient than it was before. So it used to be that in the past, um, you know, you'd have a decent amount of driveline loss, and you still do have some of that, but with uh, the CX-30 here, they actually said they improved rear driveline loss by 70% over the newest CX-5. So, I mean, that's a big improvement. It means that if you do choose the all-wheel drive, you can still get these with just front-wheel drive as well, but if you want all-wheel drive, you're not going to be missing out on as much efficiency as you had to in the past. So the fuel economy numbers here for the all-wheel drive version, you actually only lose out on one MPG over the front-wheel drive version. So the front-wheel drive CX-30s here, you're going to be getting 25 in the city, you get uh, 33 on the highway, and then you get 28 combined. Now going to the all-wheel drive drops your highway and your combined numbers by one. So you're still 25 in the city with the all-wheel drive, and then you go down to 32 on the highway and uh, 27 combined. Now the the caveat is that that's only with cylinder deactivation, which is only on the top premium trim. So if you go without the cylinder deactivation, you're not in a top trim, then you're going to be getting just one less for all those metrics in the all-wheel drive version. So that's the only thing that's uh, you know worth mentioning. So then you'd be 24 in the city, but still, I mean, you're basically one MPG off of the front-wheel drive version going to the all-wheel drive, which is basically unheard of. There's almost always a big fuel economy penalty. And the fact that they got rid of that, again, with that improved driveline loss is, is just really, really impressive. So really no difference in the real world probably between going for the all-wheel drive and the front-wheel drive as far as your efficiency goes, which is awesome. And there's a bunch of different little tricks on how they have improved that. You know, it is still, you know, a front-wheel drive by a system, but it does do um, a little bit more rear involvement than I think some of the other systems. So with other systems and competing vehicles, it will only send power to the rear if it senses slip. Whereas the Mazda system always um, is actually putting a tiny bit of power to the back and it'll actually put more to the back when you do an acceleration like I just did, it'll actually preemptively put a little bit of power to the rear there um, because of the weight transfer and um, they think that helps with the feel and uh, you know it's the driving dynamics and so you always have power shifting around even on a dry surface when you don't have wheel spin it will do that and you can also whenever you do go off the beaten path if you take your CX-30 off-road there's an off-road assist button now that you can press and with that it will actually limit wheel spin more um, to make sure that you're you know uh, getting decent traction and going a little bit slower lower on trails and stuff, uh, but it actually with that will start with a, with more power to the back uh, to help get you going a little bit better because it assumes you're going to be on a slipperier surface. So that's kind of a cool little feature as well. So there's all kinds of tricks. And so now, you know, just cruising on a uh, main road here that's not quite as twisty at some highway speeds. You know, you do hear road noise a little bit more, but I don't think there's anything in this segment where you don't hear road noise. So I think this is still by far the most refined out there uh, as far as everything this competes against. Um, but it's, you know, just so comfortable still. And it's such a relaxing vehicle to drive, uh, even at highway speeds, whenever you're not pushing it, just cruising down the road. Um, you can really tell just how much attention uh, they they took to make this really a very refined vehicle. And you need to, if you test drive this compared to all the other stuff out there, the buzzy engines and just CVTs that are just really all over the place as far as engine RPMs and stuff, this is on a whole nother level. And it really does, I think, more accurately compete with stuff like the Lexus UX200 that I uh, reviewed, or the 250s that I reviewed uh, earlier, about a year or so ago. Um, yeah, I think it's more akin to that than it is to, you know, the Honda HRVs and all that kind of stuff, because this is just, with the interior being so much nicer, the driving dynamics being so much nicer, everything is just really punching a class above. And, you know, Moz has recently been pushing more towards a premium positioning in the market, and I can see that. This is a very nice midway point. So whenever you compare it to some of those other luxury brands and their small crossovers, I think this is uh, very comparable with those. And whenever you consider then the pricing of this, um, it's just kind of amazing how they can offer such a nice vehicle for for as much money as they do because it does it is very competitive with all the other non-premium brand you know compact crossovers and uh, so if you value a nice interior and a polished driving experience um, you know I mean you do pay a little bit more than some of the cheaper competitors but 
I think it's well worth the extra money uh, for just, like I said, the, the amount of refinement in here is just head and shoulders over any of the others. And if you test drive this compared to the others, I think you'll notice that as well very, very quickly. So the pricing here of the CX-30 is, uh, so they're gonna be starting just under $23,000. It's uh, 22,945, including destination. And then uh, these max out, like this one being the premium trim with the all-wheel drive and everything, are gonna max out uh, just over 30,000, about 30,600. $45. So even still, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, like even Jeep Renegades, you can get well over you know, the $34,000 range for one of those fully loaded. So this isn't even at the top of the pricing segment. It's, it undercuts a lot of them, even in this fully loaded trim, by a few thousand bucks. And again, I mean, like comparing this interior to stuff like a Jeep Renegade, for example, I mean, there's no comparison. This interior is just heads and shoulders so much nicer. Um, you have more power. I mean, everything is just really, really impressive here in the CX-30. It's a very strong value and a very compelling offering here from Mazda. And so, yeah, I'm very impressed with the CX-34. You know, the average commuter vehicle and for someone who just wants, you know, a nice, comfortable, spacious little crossover, I think this fits the bill perfectly and is going to compare very favorably, like I said, with just about everything else out there. So anyway, huge thanks to Mazda for providing me with this opportunity to review the CX-30 for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on the CX-30 in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.